In our last video, we learned how to set work offsets on the Haas mill using an edge finder and how to set tool offsets with respect to the workpiece. In today's video, we'll explore a somewhat better method that includes using the Heimer 3D Sensor Probe. Let's review the lesson objectives. By the end of this video, students will be able to set X and Y axis work offsets using the Heimer 3D Sensor Probe set a z-axis work offset using the Heimer probe, and finally, set tool length offsets by referencing tools to a fixed location such as the machine table. Before we begin, we should note that the methods shown in this video are not the only ways to set tool and work offsets. There are many valid methods. We've chosen to show a few that work well in our shop. Your shop standard practices may differ, so check with your instructor or shop supervisor before setting or changing any work or tool offsets. Warning! Improperly set work or tool offsets can lead to catastrophic machine crashes. Be sure to verify all offsets when running a program for the first time and after any offsets have been changed. Caution! The methods shown in this video apply only to the Heimer 3D Sensor Probe. Do not ever attempt to manually probe a workpiece with a digital probe such as the Renishaw probe, as costly damage will result. We'll start by jogging the Heimer probe near the workpiece. Use a slow jog increment of one thousandth when approaching. Position the probe tip behind the workpiece and slightly below the surface. Jog the workpiece slowly toward the probe until the needle on the gauge begins to move. Ensure the probe stylus is indeed below the surface of the workpiece. Continue jogging the y-axis. There's the needle movement. Carefully jog until the large needle has circled around twice and both the large and small needles are pointing to zero. From the current command's display, origin the y-axis operator coordinate. Carefully jog the workpiece away from the probe, turning the jog handle slowly at first to ensure the proper direction. The gauge needles should unwind counterclockwise. Let's repeat the process for the x-direction now. Jog the workpiece such that the probe is beside it. Again, slowly jog the workpiece into the probe stylus and continue jogging until both needles point to zero. There's one time around the gauge, and here's zero. Use the ten thousandths jog increment for a finer adjustment if needed. That looks great. On the current command's coordinates display, origin the X operator coordinate. Carefully jog the workpiece away from the probe. Make sure you're jogging in the proper direction. Raise the Z axis so the probe is above the workpiece. Now, Jog the X and Y axes until they are back at the point where we pressed origin and read zero on the current command's operator coordinates display. We are now positioned exactly over the corner of the part. Press the Offsets Display key. Press again to activate the Work Offsets panel. Move the cursor to the G54 row and X-axis offset column. With the probe still directly over the part corner, press the Part Zero Set key. Press once for X and again for Y. Notice the machine coordinate values for these axes have been entered into the Offsets table. Now let's set the Z work offset. Go back into handle jog mode and move the machine so the probe is approximately over the center of the workpiece.
Carefully jog the probe downward until it contacts the workpiece. Switch to the finer 10 thousandths jog mode if necessary. Continue jogging at a slow rate until the gauge needles both reach zero without going past. That looks good, the needles are aligned. Bring up the current command's display and origin the Z-axis operator coordinate. Jog the probe away from the workpiece by holding the Z-positive axis jog key. This is much safer than using the jog wheel, since there's no chance of accidentally jogging down. With the part surface set as zero, now jog the table so the probe is over the two-inch Z-axis dial height setter. When jogging down, watch the clearance between the probe body and any work pieces or fixturing. Use a 123 block to elevate the two-inch height setter if necessary. Carefully position all three axes to bring the probe down over the small calibration touchpad on the height setter. This is a fixed reference location that is not spring-loaded. Continue jogging down in minus Z until the gauge needles on the Hymer probe reach zero. Make a note of the Z-axis coordinate. This is the true height difference from the top of our workpiece to our tool height setting location. Bring up the work offsets display. If needed, move the cursor to the proper row and column for the G54 Z-axis work offset. Also note that the number from the current command's coordinate display is also shown here. We'll now enter that number into the input line. Press enter to add it to the offset table. Verify that the number in the table matches the Z operator coordinates shown. Note, when working in the offsets table, Pressing the Enter key adds the value from the input line to the existing offset table value. To overwrite the existing offset value with the value from the input line, press the F1 key instead. Jog the probe away from the height setter block by holding the positive Z-axis jog key. Continue jogging using the hand wheel. Remove the Hymer probe from the spindle and return it to its storage location. Face the gauge away to avoid scratches. Do not leave the Hymer probe in the tool changer while machining. Now let's offset each tool to the 2-inch dial height setter gauge. When jogging the Z-axis downward, be sure to watch for clearance between the spindle and workpiece or fixturing devices. If clearance is an issue, the dial height setter can be placed on a 1-2-3 block and the appropriate changes can be made in the offset table. Jog slowly when approaching the height setter, then switch to a 1,000th jog increment. Continue jogging until the gauge needle reaches zero and make any fine adjustments needed using the 10,000th jog increment. With the needle on zero, ensure the cursor is on the proper row and column of the offset table for the tool in the spindle and press the Tool Offset Measure key. The Z machine coordinate will be entered into the H-length column for that tool. Now, jog the tool away from the height setter by holding the Z-positive axis jog key before using the wheel. Close the door and initiate a tool change. We'll repeat the offsetting process for each tool that will be used in the program. Again, jog the Z downward. Switch to the 1,000th jog increment when approaching the height setter. Continue jogging until the needle reaches zero. Bring up the offsets display 
and ensure the cursor is positioned on the correct column and row. Press the Tool Offset Measure key. Verify the proper Z value has been entered. Jog away from the height setter, initiate a tool change, and repeat the process. You try narrating the steps this time. With practice, an operator can become very proficient in performing these steps quickly and accurately. Let's see it one more time.
All right, our offsets are complete. Now let's check them using MDI mode. Action when you're ready. Yeah. And cut. Okay. This concludes our video on setting work offsets with the Hymer probe and setting tool offsets in reference to the table. As previously mentioned, this is only one of many ways to set work and tool offsets. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and keep an eye out for a future video which will include performing the first article part run. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.